we can now come back. But we were really not back because we really never went away. We were just uh, in a um, state of suspended animation, kind of what we call a cocoon siesta phase. Um, a rethink after being bitten by snakes, we're back with uh, plenty of energy and no venom in our systems. What do you think? Of, is that about accurate? I think that is more than about accurate. I think that is, hits it right on the head. Mm -hmm. We don't have any uh, lurid stories to report. We know we could get a lot of publicity and probably sell millions of albums if we'd all been to the Betty Ford Clinic or all been converted and born again or joined strange religious cult or um, been inducted into a satanic cabal. Well, in all fairness, uh, Bob and Bob on their vacation last year did do a tour of the Betty Crocker. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's true too. Yeah, mm -hmm. to learn more about white bread. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but um, unfortunately, we can't claim any of that. We actually had to drive normal cars, get them repaired, stand in long lines to pay bills uh, at the gas company. Um, mundane, real, real life situations that are a fact. If you investigate them, they are far more horrible than any. Um, any sensationalistic story about substance abuse, I would think. Far more frightening. Mm -hmm. Life in the real world is probably living hell. But we're... We survived it. They couldn't kill us. Basically, it was our parents that uh, brought us back together. Uh, you know, it's... Mom and Dad, when they moved out of town for that factory job, when the factory closed down, you know, it split things up with the band for a while. It was hard to get together on the weekends, but, uh, we all go to the same unemployment office together now, so we, we had a chance to regroup. Yeah, that was one reason. Yeah. yeah. It's always a group effort to get back together, because getting back together implies the group therefore it has to be by definition a group effort of course because there has to be a common goal and a reason for being otherwise you can't exist and I think that there was more to say and more to do because while we in the beginning pioneered a lot of things that are now acceptable we didn't exactly always get perceived that way or get credit for them and being ahead has its price, like the cliche of pioneers get scalped. It's true. And while we started, or we're one of the groups of people that started the music video um, approach to, to uh, music, and we developed new ways of imaging ourselves and staging shows and so on, and... Um, and did a lot of other other things associated with being new wave or radical or far out it is now totally acceptable we've been vindicated in a way the way the mainstream has come around and used a lot of the techniques and technologies for making music that we started using a long time ago in the early days of the uh, whole turnaround in music that's the beauty of it though so, okay, we're not ahead anymore, but we're rather we're in time, and we're here to uh, assume our rightful place in the order of things, because we still have something to say, and we still have creative uh, ideas. This is exciting, Jerry. Yes, it is. We are um, fortunate enough to be able to give away our own album. And uh, we're wearing the World Service uniforms on the front. And we are naked on the back, just like Prince. Well, almost like Prince. And um, it's quite a deal, I think. Quite a deal. Well, that's great. When are we going to do this? I don't know. I guess uh, you'll have to stay tuned for a special record guide giveaway. Well, oddly enough, Mark, um, Record Guide has uh, 51 of our Devo albums to give away. I think that's because there's uh, 51 states in the Union now, isn't there? 
Well, what did we, uh, did we acquire Mexico? I think so. Oh, great. Oh, uh, L.A. has most of Mexico there now. Yeah, so we might as well just keep going. Mm -hmm. Uh, to get your free album, send your cards or letters to... The Record Guy Giveaway. Debo, mm -hmm. P.O. Box 4007, Cherry Hill, New Jersey, 08034. That's The Record Guy Giveaway, Debo, P.O. Box 4007, Cherry Hill, New Jersey, zip code 08034. Isn't that the uh, boss's zip code? Well, I think it is. Last time I wrote him a fan letter, I think that was the zip code I used. Great. People are always asking us, you know, has your music changed? And I'm, I mean, I guess while we think it's always changing, uh, I, I can see how the, to the outside world it doesn't, because some things never change. And I mean, you're you and your artistic expression or whatever drives you to do what you do makes sure that there's an imprint over everything you do. So in, in one sense, anybody I've ever liked, when I think of any artist I've ever liked, any musician I've ever liked, it seems to me they never change. Maybe they do variations on a theme or they keep restating their basic, basic uh, vision that keeps driving them to create and find a slightly different packaging for it. And that is both the change and no change. And I would say we're, we're much the same. We, we certainly are like the band who fell to earth. I mean, this album is more, as time has passed, it's more human. Is, is, it's not nerds with synthesizers, it's not robotic, it's not, you couldn't accuse us of being uh, um, craft work or soulless. It's, it's, uh, it's got, it's got edges that deal with uh, real problems of being a, a living, breathing mortal on the planet. And that's what's good about it. Since our hiatus, or whatever you want to call it, cocoon siesta phase. The only thing that's changed literally in, in Devo is our drummer. Um, our former drummer, Alan Myers, uh, his brain became unwashed. He no longer wants to be Devo, so uh, he wants to pursue a different lifestyle. He doesn't want the touring, the pressure, the, the uh, publicity, the responsibility. He wants to stay at home, basically, and uh, we really couldn't find a way to accommodate that because being in Devo is being, is being totally committed. It's part of being total Devo. And um, David Kendrick, who used to drum with Sparks and the Gleaming Spires before that, is a person who has always been in line with our aesthetic and, and been and had an affinity with us as people. And it made sense, it was just organic, that he would come in and assimilate himself into our structure. He's now become the fifth Devo. Right now, Mark and I are trying to um, deal with the reality of going on tour. We really have a have a strong desire to go out and tour again, and it's very important to us. And Devo Live was always an ultimate experience. We put a lot into it. The show always incorporates special new state-of-the-art stuff, film, props, imagery, um, theatrical lighting, mm -hmm. a larger theme. That's what was always good about us. And uh, nobody that's seen Devo live ever came away feeling ripped off or slighted. Because we feel if you're going to bother playing songs that are on a recording somewhere, that you should add a dimension or two to help people understand the motivation or mentality behind the song rather than just stand there and play them. That adds nothing. You might as well go home and listen to the record because it's never going to sound as good live as it does on a record. So right now, the reality of things out there today in the marketplace are such that for us to do what we did in the past or to do a modern version of what we did in the past would cost literally three times as much as it did in 1981 or 82. So to do so, one must make your basic devil deal with the uh, corporation and seek a sponsor. And um, we, we very much care about what we do in that arena, in the business arena, and we will not integrate ourselves with a sponsor that would um, be unpalatable or be, be something that we were against as, as a product out there or something. 
So in other words, if there's a recombinant DNA lab out there that would like a new spokesperson, yeah. they're available.